while doing the review of the Razer Blade 2016 that I just recently launched, uh, I came across an eGPU or an external GPU housing by the same company called The Core. Now the idea behind an eGPU, not just this one by Razer, but there's other ones as well, is that you can plug in via a Thunderbolt 2 or Thunderbolt 3 into your laptop and then put a desktop graphics card into this enclosure and your computer can use it as if it was internally installed. Now the implications of that are pretty incredible. Uh, when playing games or for example, editing video like I do, uh, it's very graphic intensive. And so that means the ability to have a much more powerful graphics card gives you this desktop crazy performance out of your tiny laptop. Now, Razer isn't the only one to make one of these eGPUs. Uh, there are other companies, but the Razer one's become a little more popular, one, because it's been out for a bit. Uh, it also looks really nice and has a bunch of extra ports on it, an Ethernet port and USB 3.0 ports and all this other stuff. Uh, and it also is not proprietary to Razer. Now, it does work best when you plug in a Razer laptop, it just kind of is plug and play, but it is using standards like Thunderbolt. Uh, so you could technically plug in other laptops into it. Now there are a few other ones that have that ability as well. Uh, I've linked to a few other ones that are a little cheaper than the Razer uh, down below. You can check those out, but the idea is all the same. Any laptop technically with a Thunderbolt 2 or 3 port can utilize this feature, albeit with some headaches depending on the laptop, it's not always plug and play. Uh, but this turns out that it's a feature built into Windows. Whatever enclosure you use, it's gonna have some sort of like locking mechanism that you can unlock, pull it out, put your graphics card into the PCI slot, and then attach the power cables, put it back in, lock it up. Then we're gonna also want to plug in the power, of course, for the enclosure and an external monitor. Now, the reason we plug in an external monitor into the graphics card in the enclosure is because Thunderbolt is kind of what's helping make this a reality because it has a lot uh, of speed for the bandwidth, right? So even though it does have that speed, it's not quite enough usually to send stuff from the computer to the graphics card and then pull that back for the display. You can try it, but it's, it's gonna slow things down a lot. So it's better to actually plug in an external monitor so that you can send the information to the graphics card and then have that go out a different cable into a monitor. Now, if you're using an enclosure that is related to the computer using, for example, the Razer Core and the Razer computer, uh, then it's a matter of just kind of plugging it in and it works for the most part. I, for mine, actually had to download Razer's GPU switcher program, which is in beta, um, but essentially it disables in device manager the graphics card within the computer whenever you attach an external one and vice versa. Um, so just a little extra thing I had to do, but for the most part, that's about it. Once I plug it in, it's good to go. Now, if you have a computer that is not meant to be used directly with the enclosure you bought, then there's a few more things you need to do. First, you need to click this link below and install the Thunderbolt drivers from Intel. Once those are installed, you can plug in the eGPU, and then we're gonna install the drivers for the graphics card. So if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, you're gonna to go to their website and download the graphics uh, drivers for them. Otherwise, if you've got an AMD one, you need to go to the AMD website, etc. After that though, it should just work uh, and should is the key term there. Uh, there's a lot of different cards, there's a lot of different enclosures, a lot of different laptops, so there can be some other things you might have to do to make sure that it works. What I recommend though is if you're planning to do this, go look online for your exact setup, the laptop, the enclosure, and the graphics card, and just see if other people have gotten it to work, and if they didn't, chances are you can find where they posted how they got it to work after the fact, or other people have helped them get it to work. So just do that before you decide on the graphics card, the enclosure, etc. If you don't want to experiment and try to figure that out, you can, of course, buy the enclosure that goes with the laptop you have. Uh, besides Razer, MSI has one, Alienware has one. There's a bunch of different companies. So you can look that up and figure that out if you wanted to just go the easy route. Although that one is going to be a little more expensive, generally speaking, and it also means that you have to buy the laptop. So if you don't already have that laptop, it means buying a new laptop, and that's obviously dumb. Uh, but yeah, but that is a, a way to guarantee compatibility and also their technical support will help you if there is any issues. Regardless of which way you set it up though, the difference in power is pretty impressive. Now these benchmarks 
are from my Razer Blade, which has a GTX 1060 already in it, which is a desktop graphics card. And then I plugged it into the core with a GTX 1080 in it. So it's a jump, but it's not gonna be as drastic of a jump as some other computers that you'll find out there. For example, like the Razer Blade Stealth that we're sticking with Razer. Um, but yeah, you can Google online to see different comparisons uh, that are a little bit bigger than the ones I have here. Uh, but for mine, I had you know between a 40 and 50% jump in performance. That counts for frame rates in videos when de doing a 3D mark. And then also even for rendering Premiere, it cut the footage time for rendering in half. So there you go, not too shabby, right? Um, and it's kind of cool to have them as a docking station as well. I kind of like that I have all of my drives and everything plugged into the core or whatever eGPU you want to use. Uh, and then as soon as I plug in my laptop, it's just kind of projects onto my monitors and I'm good to go. Uh, now, this also, by the way, isn't entirely limited to Windows. It is meant for Windows, but there is a way to get this to work on Mac. I'm gonna do another video on that though. So if you wanna see that, please subscribe to be notified when that happens. Otherwise, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the eGPU concept, of the core of the Razer, the other ones that are out there. Are there any other ones that you guys really think are cool that are probably more universal than the core and a little cheaper? Because it's not the cheapest, if we're honest. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Always love to hear from you guys. And if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, please check out my YouTube channel. And if you like what you see there, please subscribe. As always, though, thanks for watching.